From UFOs to ghosts and psychic powers, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now and learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. In the United States, taxation is a touchy subject. The income tax system as we know it began with the ratification of the 16th Amendment in 1913. Today, some voters believe people don't pay enough tax, and others believe people pay too much. One thing's for sure, you can count on taxes being a hot-button issue in every U.S. election. While people don't always agree on what exactly is wrong with the current tax system, most folks will agree it's far from perfect. However, some take this a step further. Not only is the system broken, they argue, but it's not even legal. Here's where it gets crazy. People who refuse to pay tax because they consider it illegal are known as tax protesters. In numerous court cases, these protesters have refused to pay taxes for a number of reasons, usually based in some way on the perceived constitutional basis of income tax or the lack thereof. The theory goes like this. During some point in U.S. history, the federal government either abolished income tax or ceased to exist entirely, and all of the tax collected since is part of a nationwide conspiracy. Some protesters believe the government passed a debt threshold in the Constitution during a traumatic historic event such as the Great Depression or the Civil War, and that this debt triggered the abolition of the federal government. The goal of this conspiracy changes depending on whom you ask. To protesters such as William Cooper, the income tax conspiracy aims to redistribute wealth, creating a classless society and propagating communism. To others, the goal of the tax system masters echo those of shadowy organizations so common in conspiracy theories such as the Freemasons or the Illuminati. And tax protesters take their grievances to court. In fact, protesters have earned a reputation for being notoriously litigious, and the IRS has dedicated a section of their website to specifically dismissing the protesters' claims. Consider the Admiralty Court argument that the type of flag a court uses may determine whether the court is capable of ruling in tax cases. If the U.S. flag in a court is fringed with gold, it is considered by some a signal that the trial is being held in an admiralty or military court. Others have focused on the use of the term voluntary. To tax protesters, voluntary means that citizens must elect to file tax returns. Other protesters have argued that printing their names in all capital letters refers to a different entity or person, as they do not capitalize their names in conventional use. Protesters have also argued that the U.S. has switched to fiat currency and that they are not required to pay taxes using this tender. These arguments all have one thing in common, the belief that the government is taking advantage of uninformed citizens and that a person with enough knowledge of the law may avoid avoid paying taxes. So how does the government react to these claims? Not well. In multiple cases, the courts have rejected these arguments as frivolous. According to the IRS, the word voluntary refers to the system of allowing taxpayers initially to determine the correct amount of tax and complete the appropriate returns rather than having the government determine tax for them. To mainstream America, these protesters are radical conspiracy theorists. The protesters argue that the average average American simply doesn't understand the legal situation and that the government is breaking the law. And according to the tax protesters, that's the basic question. Is the IRS spending millions a year to enforce the law or is there something they don't want you to know?